So uh, basically, the global textbook uh, project is uh, the goal. Actually, is to create a thousand free textbooks, uh, and the thousand free textbooks are going to be for people in the underdeveloped worlds, and and for the simple reason that textbooks are the most expensive, or or one of the most expensive pieces of education. And numerous uh, research projects, numerous uh, government reports, the uh, commission reports have, have all shown that if you invest in, in educational uh, resources, the payoff is, is very, very high compared to if you invest in, say, building of a, a house or because of, because of the transformative nature of education. To me personally, um, I grew up in the Middle East, um, and as I was growing up, I knew the cost of textbooks. People who had books were clearly at an advantage to those that didn't, uh, and everybody could not go ahead and buy books. Like the books that I used through my schooling, my parents would keep them and give them to my friends. And after they use it, it would come back to be used by my brother. After he used it, it would go to, go to his friends. And so my textbooks that I used in say 12th grade would be used by a student eight years from that time. And so uh, getting new textbooks every year or every uh, quarter was was uh, not not a concept that I was used to and then when you come to the US and you see the cost of text which is just huge so that's 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 a personal reason why I think this project is very very important um, so how did how did we get this rolling so to speak um, we began actually in about um, my first quarter year so, so um, probably January of 2006, Rick uh, Watson, who's a chair professor at the University of Georgia, was putting together a textbook on information systems. And uh, Rick had contacted me and asked me if I would uh, help write a chapter on, in this book. When I got the assignment, I uh, thought about it and I always wanted to see if how would students react to this opportunity. So what I did was I emailed Rick and I asked him, can I have students write the, write the content? And he, at that same time, was already experimenting with having him, his students write a whole textbook on XML. And he told me, yes, go ahead by all means. And so all I did was I dropped an email to all of the high school uh, lists within approximately 20 minutes I probably had more than 30 email responses from not only students but from alums and from students across every single program every single one and what I did was I basically took the top eight or ten of them and I dropped each each of these people an email and said you know congratulations you are the first eight to uh, respond your, it, your is our task. We need to write a chapter on implementing information systems. And I basically told them, well, I'll give you guys a few days to think about this and then come back to me. Before even a couple of days were over, the students themselves organized how this would, would be done. The students broke up the chapter into different pieces they uh, decided who would take leadership on on uh, which pieces of the chapter and they basically didn't allow me to do any of the writing this small experiment to me was helped me realize a few things number one students are interested in doing projects where they are making a difference number two students love to do projects where their work is is known to the rest of the world and number three, students don't need a lot of micromanagement. Uh, and it, 
it also helps me think about the concept of teamwork, right? So all through my uh, uh, youth and uh, as I was growing up, I played on a lot of teams, sports, and my favorite one was f football. And the attitude that a coach takes is I have an extremely talented collection of individuals. I can't really teach them how to use their talents. What I have to teach them is how to work as a unit. I have to give them the boundary conditions on the pitch to play in, and then I love them to play and trust that they know best. And this project really helped me realize that in the classroom setting, so to speak. So then, a few years later, uh, and I continue to keep in touch with Rick and Dawn uh, Hakabri, who is, who is a co-leader of the project. And about April of last year, Dawn and me were at a colleague's uh, wedding. Uh, where Dawn was the groomsman and I was the best man. Uh, and we were chatting uh, before the fighting and we were talking about classes and school and Dawn got interested in how I was engaging companies in through my research. And I had uh, made the comment that I would like to do more and, and engage companies in actually the classroom. Dawn had had a student who was at Bearing Point, who was interested in doing a book on change management. And Don said, well, why don't I put you in a touch with Ram Jaya Raman? And why don't the two of you talk? And so uh, I uh, got in touch with Ram. And Ram and Sonia and, and myself, we began to talk about the idea of a change management book. And the idea was very, very basic, but, but had the potential to be very, very uh, important. We would have people from Bearing Point be collaborators, people from the iSchool be collaborators, and students, and, and alums. And we would build a textbook that would become the most up-to-date, accurate, and comprehensive book on change management. Now, why did we choose change management? Change management is one of those few areas where there's not a good textbook out there. There are a lot of good books, a lot of good books by uh, professors that uh, are their experiences. There, there are a lot of good books by managers, but there is not a book that combines everything. Okay, and it's very difficult to have a textbook. So, uh, in about July of of uh, Last year in uh, 2008, uh, Ram and Sonia created a team at Barron Point to basically uh, bring together their expertise on change management. And they then crafted the outline for the book, or the first draft of the outline. Uh, and this outline was based on executive feedback on what was important for students to know about change management. Now this then was uh, brought uh, to me and I, along with a few of my colleagues from the academic world, examined the outline and said, okay, if these are important for executives, these are the things we think that are important from the academic field, right? So I had a person from communications look at the outline, I had a person from sociology look at the outline and then through a series of iterations we came up with a revised outline for the book and then because I was doing a class on change management uh, the outline was then divided up into each chapter and then various student groups were assigned to each chapter for each chapter we had three contacts at bear at bearing point who were responsible for helping the students along and within 10 weeks through a series